Let's move on to main topic number one. And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Allison Tyson, who writes, Hi, John and Rob. Did you see Sir Patrick Stewart's tweet? You got to say, sir. You can't just say Patrick Stewart. Did you see Sir Patrick Stewart's tweet <laughs> about CBS All Access? He says that ahead of the season one finale of Picard, they're making CBS All Access free until April 23rd if you use the code GIFT. I already have it and already love Picard, but I wanted to make sure everyone knew about it. Do you think more streaming services might follow suit and offer a free month while people are participating or practicing social distancing at home? All right. Thanks a lot for sending in uh, that in, Allison. And yes, Patrick Stewart himself uh, did, you know, say engage, jumped on his social media and let the world know that not only his show, but all of CBS All Access has gone free, free until April 23rd, giving everybody a good chance to really sample and, and check out the service. This is the tweet that Patrick Stewart put out. He said, our Star Trek Picard season finale is Thursday. And starting today, this was yesterday, until April 23rd, you can watch for free on CBS All Access in the U.S. with the code GIFT. It's felt good to bring Picard back. I can't wait to reunite with our cast and crew for season two. So, Rob, we just talked a little bit ago about the fact that, you know, there's no rule book right now for, for where we're right. in for movies and movie releases. Like, should you be doing this? Should you be doing that? The streaming services, being as young as they are, they're also in the same boat with this whole situation. This is new for them, too. And it seems like CBS All Access has decided to adopt a, you know what? While everybody, while so many people are at home right now, this is a good opportunity for us to try to get them enticed into our network. Let's make it easy for them to check it out. Let's make it for free. See if it can hook some people in. Rob, do you think, because remember, television is different. I mean, I, I acknowledge television is different than movies, but do you think a strategy like this may work for them? And if so, do you think we might see, and this is maybe the bigger part of the question, do you think we might see other services like maybe Disney Plus, maybe Hulu, uh, hell, maybe Netflix. Netflix has done little things like this before. Do you think this is a good time for something like that, or do you think now is not the time for this type of strategy? What do you think? Well, look, this is the actual week that the finale of the first season of Picard airs, and I, I do I do think that there's a lot of people that did sign up specifically and paid money to see the Picard series, and they were hoping that it would drive uh, subscriptions. And I think those people, in a way, were – there might be some animosity towards CBS All Access. I understand why they're doing it now. They This was done for one reason. They want to get more eyeballs on their service. I don't think the subscriptions because of Picard went up as high as they wanted. And this is a move – look, it's a very savvy, shrewd business move on their part. People are home. You know, it's, it's free CBS All Access to see Picard, but you do have to sign up for the service. So I think it's a very, very savvy business move. Um, but I think that what would be even savvier is streaming services need great content. And they need great content that people are flocking to. And CBS has tried really to build their entire streaming service around two Star Trek shows and things like The Twilight Zone or The Good Fight. And I just don't think that they've actually an added enough original content to their streaming service because once Picard goes off the air... Or, or the the first season's over, which is tonight at midnight. That's when I watch it. Uh, there's nothing more to watch. So I think it was it was a a, a good move on their part to do this. Do you can you see can you see other streaming services maybe adopting something like this during this quarantine area or era, or do you think it, I, it's not something that would necessarily work for them? I don't think. I mean, I think what the other streaming services are doing is what they should do, which is drop great content. You know, as we've talked about on this show, the only reason people are going to start watching a streaming service or subscribe, pay good money, is if there's something for them to watch. And, you know, I mean, Disney Plus dropped Frozen 2 and onward. If you're home with the kids, I've heard people say that their kids have watched Frozen 2 like 20 times already. And it's been on, what, a week? 
I mean, God <laughs> knows if you can't sing in those households, I don't know what you're going to do. But uh, the uh, the that's that's the way that streaming services get people by dropping good content. I mean, Netflix has that new Tiger King documentary that everybody's talking about, and 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 whatever everything else they've got going on there. Um, Amazon's got things like Hunters, and I, I I see a lot of people talking about great great shows. HBO has the plot against America now. They just wrapped up The Outsider. And when people are talking about their streaming shows, that's when people subscribe. You know, it's it's funny because I, even I, as somebody who I, I do enjoy the stuff they got, you know, Discovery, 1 and 2, Picard, whatever. Rob, I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, with Disney+, Plus. They launched with Mandalorian and they've received some criticism that they haven't really had anything to follow it up with, but it's still relatively very young, right? Right. And so for this point, we still give it a bit of a pass. I enjoy those shows we just mentioned on, on CBS All Access, but CBS All Access has simply been around too long for it to get a pass anymore for simply not having any original content. Like, it, it's fine if you launch with one show. Okay, but guess what? A year from now, Disney Plus is going to have a hell of a lot more original content on their network than CBS All Access has at this point in their development. And CBS All Access has been around a hell of a lot longer than Disney Plus has. And the one question mark I have about this strategy is the fact that, hey, it's great. You want to put a bunch of eyeballs on your channel. Okay, that's wonderful. But... Back in my old, going back to the early 2000s in my web design days, right? You know, there would often be clients that want to, you know, let's put the word out and let people come see the site. And we would always tell them, you don't want people's first impression of your site to be an incomplete site. You don't want that to be the first impression. You want right. it when they come to the site that look how great this site is. Look how wonderful this thing is, right? I remember, Rob, when I was working for Lionsgate and we were doing the uh, Comic-Con HQ, right? We were on the Comic-Con HQ network. I, I was executive producing a show on there called Film HQ and I had a lot of fun with that. And I really enjoyed working with Lionsgate. I, but liked, one of the, I liked it. I, yeah, and yeah, you were on it, by the way. You were a yeah. guest on it a couple of times. But it was one great. of the, the fatal mistake they made, Rob, the fatal mistake they made was their big high profile shows was going to be one with Mark Hamill. It was going to be one with uh, a couple of the guys from Supernatural. And it was one, the Alan Tudyk one, I think, called, called Con Men with uh, Nathan Fillion was in it as well. They launched their network with none of that. Right. Like, and as. As much as I loved my own show, my show was not the headline show. <laughs> Film HQ was meant to be a supporting content kind of show, right? They launched without having a thing. It's like, and it's great right now for CBS All Access. Say, hey, everybody come check out our network. But they're going to come and they're going to see wh what. where's the value. I'm not going to sign up for a network for two shows, even if I like those shows. So it, it's got to be something they address here, right? Because you're right. They need to have content. And there's simply no excuse for being this far along in their development and not having any. There's just no excuse well, for it. What's amazing to me, too, is, is let's say you want to base your streaming service around oh, I don't know, say Star Trek, like they've been doing. Uh, what HBO does, as soon as one of their marquee shows end, they promote their next show uh, while that marquee show is playing, yep. and then the next weekend they start their next show. So Picard was a 10-episode series. Now, admittedly, it was a very expensive series, but they've got Discovery Season 3 coming. They've got Star Trek Lower Decks, the animated show that they're making. So what you need, even if it's your new fledgling show you only need five shows that are 10 episodes each to fill out a, a year and you've got two weeks off for christmas break or whatever they should have had a new show ready to drop that people are really excited about the next week you know at least that way you've constantly got something new that hopefully will appeal to your audience that watch picard and they're not doing that and and look you've at least that's only five shows a year and and they're not they're not doing that. And you look at other places like HBO has continued to pique my interest. I thought after Thrones was over, I'm like, well, that's it for me in HBO. A lot and of that people hasn't thought been, that. 
that hasn't been the case at all. I mean, whether they're dropping Watchmen, whether they're dropping literary adaptations like The Plot Against America, you know, or or The Outsider. I'm like, these are marquee titles. You've got miniseries based on a Philip Roth, one of America's great writers. Then you got Stephen King in miniseries. And there's a bunch of stuff coming down the pike that's exciting. And HBO is using their new shows to promote the next show. And when it's over, it's like, well, this might be the end of Watchmen, but next Sunday, Stephen King's The Outsider debuts. And that's how you run a service. That's how you get people excited. And I hate to say it, yeah, it might be tough, but unless you're keeping the tap running, people are going to go elsewhere for a drink. Yeah, no, I agree. Question here is, guys, what do you think about the move right now? I mean, in principle, it's a good idea. You, everybody's at home. Give them a free free few weeks, but you got to have some content. But maybe you see it a little bit differently. Jump down to the comment section below because I want to know what your thoughts are. All right.